we show you the device, more or less. Uh, and with that, you can have any extra things like a SIM card reader, you can plug it in and do extra, to extract extra information. Now, So this is the, uh, the uh, application that we are building. So uh, this application is running uh, on Python uh, on a framework called Cherry Pi. So the idea is, is to have a Raspberry Pi running on a Cherry <coughs> Pi, then running this application, which we don't know what we call it yet. We might go for a B. So the B on the the B on a cherry on a pie, more or less. <laughs> so what you can do with this, it's, uh, so the idea you have, so it does allow you to view it in smaller screens as well. So it's a yeah, bootstrap framework. Uh, so you can do the device extraction, the SIM card extraction, and then from there you can go and you can create the cases Let's create a dummy case, assign Rombocop as the officer, uh, logical bugger. So the thing is, if we do the device extraction, we wouldn't have to do these things, these parts here. For, for this demo, what I'm going to do, I've mounted the logical image of the, the user's data partition where everything is stored uh, under slash mount slash data. So we're going to do the, just the application extraction. Uh, so I'm specifying to this application, look, I have uh, the, uh, the user's partition mounted in that location and go and do me an analysis on that specific uh, folder. So from there, it go, complains, it starts parsing the information that we have. Uh, like I said, this is from my device, so uh, right. So it's finished. So we get we get the interface here, uh, device info. So this is your catalog, more or less, that got extracted. Uh, for now, we just have the apps, more or less, working at the moment. So we have the applications that have been installed, uh, the date that they were uh, installed. Um, this is in red because it doesn't use the information stored on the device to determine the date. It just uses metadata of the folder to extract the information. But if you specify, um, so basically in the final release, we just read the configuration file of the device and tell you this application was installed at that time. Um, so the browser. So if we go into the application, what it does, it lists all the files and folders of the application. This is done automatically. Um, the uh, modules, like we said, are supplementary information that we have about this application. Uh, if we click on a file, it would, tell us, it would give us the signature, the type of the file, size, uh, Mac times, user ID, mode, and so on. From there, you can go on and you can do the, let's say, view the file, parse it and view it, uh, do a hex stamp, extract the strings of the file, and so on. So these are down here as well. Or if you can't bother, you just, just can't go and click that, and it will parse it for you. So we just clicked on the webview.db, which we weren't supposed to do that. to view the browser2.db. Now, uh, in here, we can view the bookmarks of the device. Uh, we've got the dates down there, which we, can, we could parse. We, we could specify and tell, uh, create a module or uh, add to this application's module and say that, look, the um, um, browser2.tv table bookmarks field created is uh, <coughs> the timestamp, so parse that one. We've got the history, 
And this was supposed to be parsed automatically, but I did some code changes. So the function should be date but it gets the uh, year wrong for some reason. So you would, so if you build the configuration the module for this application, it would also automatically print you the date, so translate it into a date and build it for you. Uh, the nice thing about this, it also parses the images stored in the database, so you can go through them. We would need to fix the uh, interface a little bit. To put, for example, the uh, uh, temporary files generated by SQLite, um, the right ahead log, for example, uh, which uh, you cannot parse it. There are ways to parse it anyway, but what you could do, you click on view, it would do the hex term of the application and you can go through it, maybe extract some information, or you could also go and do extract strings and view through the strings and see what's in there as well. The same goes for every file on that device, so you can do that. If the application recognizes the format, it would parse it itself, so it recognizes those uh, uh, PHP files, the database files, XML files, so it can make it, can parse them for you and you can view them nicely. Uh, so this is the um, music player I have installed. Service.xml, it's an XML file. So when I click view, you can view the contents of the file. So even without the modules, you can still do some analysis at this specific point of the application. Um. Right, so the next application uh, is an application for SIM card forensics. The, um, the reason behind building uh, this application, more or less, was because I bought this device, it's a pretty cheap device, about uh, two pounds. Um, it's a SIM card reader, and supposedly uh, it should work when pulling backups or pulling some forensic information from SIM cards. I've tried uh, almost all the applications I could get my hands on this, on, on my hands I can do SIM card forensics and none of them worked. Now maybe I was doing something wrong, but okay, a couple of them worked, but I didn't like the way they were doing things. Uh, and I'm also pretty cheap and I didn't want to buy more expensive, more expensive devices to do the extraction. So um, with that in mind, basically, what I had to do, what we had to do was uh, more or less understand how the SIM cards work. SIM cards or smart cards are essentially uh, full-blown devices. Uh, they're everywhere. Uh, uh, credit cards, train tickets, uh, almost everywhere. Uh, the ones used in, telecom in the telecommunication industry uh, run on a Java card operating system, which is essentially Java, a bit more stripped down and built for these specific things. So it's an operating, it's a, it's a whole computer system in a small device. Um, so in there, so we've got the CPU, the RAM, uh, all the other stuff, you can communicate with them through a specific protocol and ask for information, ask them to execute stuff, to send you stuff, and so on. Uh, so when you're doing forensics on SIM cards, you want to extract some information. That information is stored on the SIM card's file system. 
the file system is structured more or less like any other file system. It's, uh, it has folders and files. Uh, folders are named dedicated files, and files are essentially named elementary files. Um, so I run through it. Uh, you can communicate with them using the APDU protocol over a serial connection. Uh, information in the SIM card that could be useful in forensic analysis, the ID number of the SIM card, the mobile subscriber number of the user, which can tell us the country, the network, and the actual subscriber identification number, uh, the telephone number uh, assigned to the SIM card, the last dial numbers and location information. So the last location of this SIM card on the mobile network. These are still there, except the SMSs that are stored on the devices nowadays. But uh, on every devices, you will see the LOGI, the LND, the last dial numbers, location information uh, being there. So And also the IDs uh, of this SIM card. How you do that? OK, let's just go through this. Uh, specific one. So when you connect to the SIM card, what you do, you communicate, you initiate a connection with the SIM card, with the smart card. And then you say, you issue a command, uh, specific bytes, different commands, different uh, with bytes and so on, and you say that I want to select, for example, go into this directory, which is the master, master dedicated file, so it's the root directory. Uh, having said this, files don't have names, they just have IDs on a SIM card. So the ID of the root directory is this, and then when, when I want to read a file, I just tell the SIM card, give me the contents of file 2FE2. You can look up all these things in the uh, Etsy standards, the European Telecommunications Standards Authority. Uh, they, it's a bit sketchy, but you can extract the information <coughs> from there, given that you understand the way they write things, or you can experiment, find them out. 